If you're in the market for a smart helmet for biking or scooting, the limited edition Laval BH51M NSO helmet features some very cool tech, including indicators and built-in earphones. In this video, I cover off not only these two features, but all the other tech included in this rather cool helmet. I've been in the market for a new smart helmet since joining the e-bike revolution. After reviewing a lot of different options out there, I decided on the Laval BH51M NSO, a limited edition smart helmet. It's the more recent update of the BH51M Neo, the difference being a slightly different shape and new built-in speakers by audio equipment manufacturer JBL. It occurred to me that having a fancy e-bike should also be paired with a suitably fancy helmet for any tech enthusiasts like myself. As well as being more visible to motorists and other riders on the roads, I wanted more functionality to enhance my riding experience. Having lights built in was a starting point for exploring my options, but even more features would be my ideal. As well, having the indicator lights using the partnered handlebar controller, the BH51M NSO helmet features twin JBL speakers and a microphone for listening to music or for making phone calls. Plus, there's a wealth of other tech that will not only make your ride safer, but also automatically assist you in the event that you do experience an accident. On unboxing, the first thing I like is the style of the helmet. I went for the grey version because visibility, especially at night, is important to me. Also, size is very important to me as I have a larger head that barely fits in my old nutcase helmet. I've always been a bit self-conscious as the old helmet would perch atop my bulbous dome. The Laval helmet, by comparison, is actually a really nice fit for me. The profile looks more natural and probably offers more protection on the sides as a result. The helmet is also rated for use for bikes, scooters and skateboards. Buyers should be pleased to know that it meets various safety standards thanks in part to its EPS impact absorbing liner. The helmet weighs 480 grams, which is a comfortable weight. It feels heavy enough that you feel like you're going to get solid protection, but not too heavy that it feels like it's compressing your neck. For extra comfort, it's equipped with an adjustable dial fit wheel that will tighten the back strap to better cradle the back of your head too. The BH51M NSO is built to the IPX4 standard, so that you can be reassured that all the built-in electronics will stay dry in most weather conditions. This is especially important for the enclosed 800mAh battery that powers the lights and the speakers, which I talk about more later in this video. As mentioned at the start of the video, one of the main reasons I wanted the helmet over traditional dumb helmets is the opportunity to have additional lights for increased visibility at night. The BH51 has 53 LED lights that make up the front-facing and rear-facing light areas on the helmet. They are grouped into two front white LEDs, the rear brake light plus the left and right indicator lights. Interestingly, there seems to be a light sensor somewhere in the design that detects whether it's daytime or nighttime to conserve battery life. The main lights will only switch on at night. One additional fascinating feature of the brake light is that it uses an accelerometer to sense when you're coming to a halt, automatically triggering the red brake light at the back of the helmet, which is a really nice touch. Most of the surface area of the lighting is in the rear of the helmet, but with the indicators stretching around the sides, giving you 270 degrees of coverage on the helmet, making it easier for other road users to see you. Then on the front of the helmet, the lights work in tandem with the 270 degree tail lights to maximize visibility from all angles. Before I talk more about how the indicator lights and other functions are controlled, it's worth talking about the other major features for the BH51M NSO. Integrated into both sides of the helmet, just above your ears, are two JBL speakers and a microphone. These mini speakers connect to your phone like Bluetooth earphones. They work the same way as Bluetooth earphones too, and channel your phone's audio via the Bluetooth connection for both input and output. I talk more about the general performance of the speakers later in this video. However, unfortunately one feature I wasn't able to test was the ability to use your helmet and the Libal app like a built-in walkie-talkie with any friends riding with you who are also wearing compatible Libal helmets. The walkie-talkie mode seems like an ideal feature for riders who regularly travel together and want to be able to easily communicate. I could see this being very handy for families as well as riding enthusiasts. Unfortunately for me, I don't have any friends or family who own a similar Laval helmet. I'll potentially have to buy one for my wife next time so that when we're riding with the kids I can check out the feature. The Laval helmet comes with a separate controller to operate audio playback, volume, phone functions and indicator light functions. This tiny unit is designed to be attached to your handlebars within an easy thumb reach from your left or right hand. It features four main buttons. The top button is for taking photos via your phone, which is a fun idea but a little impractical if your phone is mounted like mine and angled for me to see the screen while riding. 
The bottom button triggers your phone's AI assistant for hands-free control of the phone while you ride, following the setup instructions that come with the helmet. The center buttons are divided into the main red button for controlling audio playback, plus answering and declining phone calls. The ring button around the center controls the volume for the speakers with the up and down sections, and the left and right sections control the indicator lights in your helmet. Incoming calls can be answered by pressing the red button, plus you can dial your last used phone number by double pressing it too. You can decline or end a call by double pressing the red button. I found the AI Assistant button not only super useful for initiating phone calls, but also for launching navigation via Google Maps as I ride. The button is also able to trigger your SOS function in the Laval app. If you've added a preferred emergency contact, holding down the red button for 5 seconds will trigger an alert message to your contact with your GPS location. This could potentially be a life-saving feature should you be unfortunate enough to be involved in an accident. However, that leads me on to one other cool feature. The helmet will also trigger an SOS alert should it detect a fall or heavy impact using the built-in accelerometer. Again, an SMS alert will be sent to your preset emergency contact with GPS location after 90 seconds. In the event you've accidentally triggered the SOS alert by dropping your helmet or you're not seriously injured, you have time to cancel it on your phone. The BH51M NSO also features an anti-loss alarm. When the helmet is connected to your phone and the distance between the helmet and the phone exceeds 20 meters, both the helmet and the phone will sound an alarm to alert the owner. This will hopefully prevent you from accidentally leaving your phone behind if you've dropped or misplaced it, or conversely, if you've accidentally forgotten your helmet somewhere. The Laval app is not only the way that you connect your helmet and adjust some of the settings, but it's also a community hub for Laval helmet owners. The main focus when you're setting up your helmet is under Devices and the first three sections. First you'll need to turn on your helmet and connect it via Bluetooth settings on your phone like you would other Bluetooth devices such as earphones. Laval actually supplies very specific instructions for new owners so I won't go into them here and it may change again after I publish this video. My advice is to make sure you read the very latest instructions from Laval should you purchase a helmet for yourself. Once connected now you'll be able to navigate to the light settings for the helmet. There are four options for different types of lighting. While they do affect the two front lights, they are predominantly for controlling the rear and indicator lights. As well as the light options, the app also has a trip recorder enabling you to keep track of your rides for posterity and to share with the community. Other functions in the app are for the walkie-talkie functions where you can create a group of cyclist friends. There are some additional functions for other compatible devices, but these are for additional hardware that you have to purchase separately to the helmet. When it comes to the performance, so far I've been very satisfied with the helmet. There are areas I'd love to see improvements in, but nothing that makes me regret buying it. So to start with, probably the biggest area for improvement for me would be an option to increase the brightness of the headlights on the front. Also, none of the available options enable you to have them turned on all the time, which I feel like is a missing feature. As I cover off later when I talk about the battery performance, there's plenty of overhead in the battery capacity to support a mode for short rides without the fear of running out of juice. Also, the brightness is rather low. Ultimately, having more visibility for traffic in front of you would give me more confidence that drivers will see me. I'm not sure the flashing modes will be eye-catching enough, especially in urban environments with a lot of other light noise from street lights, vehicles and traffic lights. The indicator lights do work better at catching the attention of other people on the road because of the larger surface area of the lighting, plus the different animated illuminations. However, during the day, the effect is lost somewhat in bright light, and cyclists using the helmet should still rely on clear hand signals when turning for safety. The audio output for music through the speakers is satisfactory. It doesn't match the quality of dedicated in-ear or over-the-ear headphones, as the speaker drivers are some way from your ears. However, the volume and clarity is satisfactory for riding. Despite this, the design does mean that you're able to monitor your surroundings at all times while still being able to listen to music like through open-backed headphones, which is a plus. I was also pleasantly surprised by the quality of the phone calls, not only for the incoming audio, but for the microphone pickup. My contacts said that they were able to hear my voice clearly in moderately busy environments. The marketing states that it's using a windproof design, which suggests the microphone is embedded in such a way that air currents don't interfere with the pickup. Or, like most modern Bluetooth earphones, it employs some kind of noise cancellation. When it comes to the other functions, there is one feature that's a bit pointless in my opinion, but I'm ready to be convinced otherwise if anyone finds a good use case. It's the option to use the controller to take pictures via your phone's Bluetooth connection. Unless I'm missing the point, most phones mounted on your bike will be facing downwards, and if you do remove your phone to take a picture, you'll remove it from the bracket and use the on-screen button or volume rocker to take the picture anyway.
As designed, you'll get some very good pictures of your front tyre, but not much else. One last point which I'm surprised Laval helmets don't include is MIPS, or Multi-Directional Impact Protection System. A lot of leading manufacturers do include the technology which is designed to reduce brain injury in the event of a crash. This may be an important consideration for some potential buyers watching this video. Finally, I wanted to talk a little bit about the battery performance. The 800 milliamp battery embedded in the helmet is rated for low temperature usage and Laval says it will last up to 12 hours of use. Charge time from empty is estimated to be 3 hours via a 5 volt 0.5 amp power source. However, in my own testing I've never been close to running it down to empty. This leads me on to an earlier point in my video. Given the excess capacity, it would be great to have an option in the light settings to have the LED lights on persistently to increase visibility. With the low power consumption of modern LED lights, I'm confident that I'd still have plenty of battery capacity to spare. Hopefully it's an option Laval will include in future updates of the app. Overall, I'm impressed with the helmet and it delivers a lot of what I need. I would like better front-facing lights and the audio is functional but not amazing for the design and technical reasons compared to earphones. I also think that an option to turn on the front-facing headlights all the time, especially for urban riding, and then offer another battery saving option for longer rides would be ideal. Also, it's worth stating that the helmet is not a replacement for additional visibility equipment like other lights and high visibility clothing. It's very much a complementary addition to other safety measures. I also would have liked the helmet to include MIPS technology for extra confidence. However, I'm pleased with the helmet overall. It has the smart features that I was looking for, plus it actually fits me better than my older helmet. The design and the colorway are smart looking and it suits my personal aesthetic. Thanks for watching and as always, please like this video and subscribe to my channel for more videos on the connected home and personal technology.